In this design tutorial, I'm going to create a Hipster California logo. So hi guys and welcome back to our latest design tutorial. My name is Manny and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to create this simple Hipster California uh, logo over here. I'm basically just going to switch over quickly to of my previous start. So this is basically where I started out with. With this image, I just typed into Google uh, wallpapers for California Beach and that is what I've came up with. And yeah, that's what I'm going to take for today's tutorial. So I'm going to just press back over here and switch back to our other image over here, our different canvas. So basically, let's start right away. I don't actually want to show you guys how to do the background and stuff. I think if you are a little bit advanced already in the Photoshop process, you might know about this. But if you don't, leave a comment down below. I would be happy to check how many people are interested in seeing how to do this background. But I'm still going to do it quickly. Let me just open this a bit. So I'm just going to show you guys here how I quickly done this. It's very simple actually to do it. So first image that I took in was basically again just obviously the background image over here. So as you can see layer 0 that's basically the image. Then as well I went into the gradient tool and just selected like a orange to purple color here. So it's kind of orange from the top going into purple just with the normal gradient. Once I switch that on you guys can see the effect. But this is not just on normal with 100% opacity here. So this is the normal grade. What I then did is just change the blending options to color and as well here the opacity all the way down to just like 35, 34, somewhere around there. That's actually fine. All right, so just to get an even cover, color already. Now, next step that I did is just created a complete new black layer here. So everything is black and just dimming that down a little bit because I didn't want to create like an adjustment layer with levels it's just a little bit tough then the contrast is just gonna get a little bit more so what I did is just a normal layer on 11 opacity then as well over here I actually went into the curves and just flattened the image as you guys can see with the curve over here taking the highlights all the way down so they're not that bright anymore so literally just dimming everything down and then as well also down here on the left hand side with the black sliders taking the blacks all the way up so they really flatten and you get that kind of cool hipster looky vibe. Alright, so again as you guys can see here's the curve. Let's just minimize or make this a bit smaller again. Then as well I went in just with a bit of hue and saturation over here. Just took the saturation down like a minus 12. Very simple, just desaturated that a little bit. Then last step that I still did is just gave that like another Gaussian blur here via the blur. Gaussian blur, so obviously just like on, I think, yeah, 8 to 10 pixels blur, so blurring that completely. Great, and added another flare here, which I also did over filter with Red Giant Software Knoll Light Factory, just under the normal sun flare effect. With also all these little polygons over here, so giving that really cool effect. Yeah, and that's my basic start ready. Now, that was just for the background. So let's start now with our whole design here on the logo and just the text. So, yeah, it's very simple actually to do it. It's not too complicated. So let's start right away. I'm going to press F for full screen mode. Just get nice and not being distracted via the background again. I'm going to go to view and first of all say new guide over here. All right, then I'm going to select here under vertical, first of all, 50% again. I want to find the center point of my canvas. Okay, so somewhere over here, I'm going to go to view again, new guide once again, and say also horizontal over here, 50% as well. Okay, for that, and we've got our center point now nicely as well. Now, for the next step, what I want to do is first of all, create like a big huge curve over here. So in order that I can write hipster like this. But it's going to be a bit tricky if you just write the text and then trying to warp it or, or make like a circle with this. Um, normally the options that you get via the text tool don't really look that cool. So yeah, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to switch up hipster here again and just go back to view, back to new guide. And it helps so much to create guides, guys. Alright, anyways, I'm going to go to vertical again. And I want to create like a 20% um, line here which basically means that the line is going to be somewhere over here so it basically starts from 0% to 100% so obviously 20% must be somewhere over here and then next time if I'm going to select 80% it's somewhere going to be over here okay so that's how I normally work with these percentages okay and as you guys can see here we go this is round about 20% of your canvas 
Okay, so let's go to view once more. New guide again, and I want to say 80% this time. Okay, and 80%. Okay, great. So, this is basically where we're going to have a starting point with our um, path that we're just going to create. So, starting from here, going all over, creating a nice bow, and going over here, stopping again. But I'm not too sure where I'm going to place it yet here, so I'm just going to take another guideline, take it all the way down. Yeah, and maybe like somewhere over here, I think if we have hipster going all the way like this, should be nice enough. Alright, so let's take the pen tool now. And with the pen tool, simply just put an anchor point over here and over here. But keep on holding your mouse and then just drag it down all the way and in a little bit. And you just want to create like a really nice curve over here. So again, I'm having a look there into the center. Once the center touches equally on all both sides, like this, a little bit here, a little bit there. Yeah, this looks good enough to me. Great, so I've already got my path. I don't need to work with path anymore. I'm just going to go over and take the text tool now. So simply select the text tool and literally just hover over the path here. And once you hover over the path, you can see that this weird text type appears, which basically means then again that you will type now on this path. Okay, so I'm going to go over here, select it, and that's where we're going to start to type. So I'm just going to write now hipster because that is what's part of our logo and I still have the wrong font so first of all let's select the right font for this I'm going to select actually a different font first of all I'm going to select all of hipster going here to the font types and as well I'm going to press actually B because I already know it's somewhere under B Bebas Neue, this one. I know my pronunciation isn't the best, but guys, I'm also going to put the whole um, fonts in the description. So if you want to find the descriptions and actually if you want to find the fonts, sorry. So I'm going to take Bebas Neue and also going to make this a little bit bigger. So let's stretch that out. So I want kind of this size. Okay, and I still want to stretch the word, the letters actually a little bit. So I'm going to go over here and just stretch the letters as well a little bit. If you guys don't have this character pad palette here, very simple, just go to Window and just select Characters over here. So you guys can also have this palette. Alright, great. So I'm pretty happy now with the hipster. It's maybe just a little bit still away. I need to get it a little bit more to the left side. So I'm going to stretch it back just a little bit. So it's kind of somewhere in the center. Okay, maybe like that. Yeah, and I'm going to accept that for the start. Great. That's hipster ready. I can still move it now, just the whole layer. So I'm just going to take the hipster font here. Let's maybe move that all the way to the top. Create quickly a new group with all of this old stuff. Come on, G, so we know this is old. Okay, great. So the hipster, I'm going to select that. Just the normal move tool. And just literally with the cursors, I'm going to go a little bit to the right. So I want the S to almost be in the center here. Okay, so I'm kind of just trying to help myself so I don't need to move lines again and stuff. Okay, great. So for the start, that's all that we're going to do. Then next step that I'm going to do is again take the text tool. And now we want to write like California really big in here. So I'm going to write California. Okay. And next step that I'm going to do is also select everything again. So with Command A, just selecting all. If you're working with a Windows uh, platform, you can also use Control when I say Command. Okay, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller again. And also my spacing here at the top. I'm just going to set that to a zero. Great. So we can make this a little bit bigger again. And now we're going to go back to the fonts again. So literally go back up here to the font types. And I've also chosen here a one, another one called Brand Ball Fat. So feet. Um, this is a thicker one and the small is a smaller one. So let's select the thick one. Oh, and everything is written in capital letters. So I'm going to have to write this again. So California. Wait, I just have to select all first. Okay, let's put that away. Okay, and let's select all with Command A again. I'm going to make this once again a little bit bigger. Just stretch that out a little bit. And first of all, let's accept that and just move it into the position that we want. Okay, so somewhere over here, and that looks really nice already. I'm going to make it a little bit, space it up a little bit with the cursors again, left and right, and up and down. Yeah, and I think if we can lean this and put it italic, it will be even better. So again, I'm going to select it with just the text tool over here, select all, and I'm going to go over to the character box and just put it on to italic here, um, just so that it leans a little bit. Okay, great. I love that. Okay, just accept it. 
and again t put V for the cursors so I can basically move it again I'm just like kind of having a look is it in the right position press Z zoom out a little bit so I normally zoom out just to get a feel if it's yeah if it's right if it feels right if it's balanced right or not and yeah then I change again okay so let's zoom in looks all great last step that I'm still gonna do here or second last is again go to text tool Again, make a new text over here at the bottom, please, like that, okay? And I'm just going to write here, since uh, maybe 2014. Okay, Command A, because I can't see it literally, it's too big, but I typed it out, it's there. Um, next step, I'm just going to go and minimize and make it smaller again. Somewhere like this. Yeah, great, but it's still on this California font, which I don't want. I want to change it back to a new font type again. And again, I'm going to press H because I already know this is somewhere. We also used this in a previous tutorial. Helvetica Neu, I really love that font because it always you can always switch it and uh, it's just so nice. Let's also go up here. It's still typed in small letters, so I actually wanted to type it in big letters. So I'm going to write here since 2014 and it's also leaning, which I don't want. So just select that, move, remove it, select all of it. First of all, italic here, we're going to switch that off, nice and stretched, or straight, but it's still too thick for me actually, so I'm going to select it again and try to work with a, the same font but just under ultra light. So that makes it really nice and thin, great. Okay, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, like so, and also going to just stretch this a little bit, great, like a 160, going to accept that. Move tool, we're going to move it somewhere over here into the center again. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I get a better perspective of this. Does it still feel right? I'm going to move it up and down a little bit. Cursors using that again. Yeah, and that's pretty cool actually. I love that. Now, for the last set that I still want to do, the lines at the moment are irritating a little bit. So I'm going to go to view, say clear guides over here. Great. Last step that I still want to do. Now when the guides disappeared, actually, it looks a bit off here, like this looks a bit weird. So I think I'm going to select California again, move tool and just literally move it in a little bit. Okay, since as well, just a bit. And this is always, this is like just a feeling that you you kind of have to play with it and practice it a bit so, until you get it. But it's it's all about feel and just seeing stuff further away or closer. Okay, last step, I think some small dots here would make a little touch there. So I'm just going to create a new layer again, over here, select the elliptical marking tool and let's zoom in a little bit closer, I'm just going to press Z on the keyboard, zoom in and I kind of want to make it the same size as this H over here, the thickness. So again, M for marking tool and I'm going to hold now shift and just literally, so it's equally expanding here, kind of make a dot like that. Again, M for marking tool so I can move the selection now. I literally just move the selection maybe somewhere over here. That I'm still going to see. Now, I still want to fill this up with a white foreground color. So again, select my white foreground color here. That's okay. And now in the selection, I'm going to hit right click, not outside of the selection. So in the selection, right click, and we can just literally say here, fill. Fill that with a white content. Yep, okay. Great, we've done. Command D, get out of the selection, and Z to zoom out again. Okay, a little bit over, and as you guys can see, that looks really nicely already. Um, I can still take this layer and just write here dot, okay, move it up and down. Great, I'm pretty happy with that. Press Command J, so you can duplicate that, Windows user, again, please Control J. Literally, I'm just going to move it all the way over to here, with the cursors, again, move it into the right position. I'm not using any guidelines, nothing. Great, that's it. Yeah, and that looks pretty amazing already. So, simple and easy, a few simple steps. Again, you can also rename this again to dot two. Put all of that together in a new group via holding shift, selecting all the layers here. Now press Command G. Yeah, and you have your text and you're ready to save it. Now you literally just go to File, Save As, and you can save it as your PSD for future uh, uses and also as a JPEG, whatever you guys need it for. Now as well, if you guys have a look in the description, I'm adding a link there where I normally find all my text fonts. Um, yeah. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next upcoming design tutorial. Thanks guys, bye bye.